I was actually a neuroscience student when I was an undergrad. And I actually went to a science meeting that had 30,000 neuroscientists at it. The Dalai Lama gave a speech and he spoke on the benefits of mindfulness and the power of mindfulness. And he also spoke on the power of neuroscience to reach inside of the brain with tools to understand the human self, the human identity, the human consciousness, and then to change it. Firstly, we should know the reality. Then on the basis of that reality, how much can change? And I started meditating every day after that, and my life radically changed. Take a moment to stretch up and settle in. The bulk of any human being's potential for personal happiness depends on focus factors. Focus factors are trainable. If we can modernize and accelerate these trainings with technology, oh boy. The phrase, this changes everything, comes to mind. Some traditions call it open presence. Some people call it choiceless awareness, but we like to call it see, hear, feel. And that's what we're converging towards here. There should be this nice line of electrodes. Okay. Yeah. In order to get this centered, we want to find out where to put the CZ electrode, which is like right on top. Sema Lab is a psychology and neuroscience lab, and Sema stands for Science Enhanced Mindful Awareness. The mission of the lab is two parts. One is really try to understand what mindfulness is. And the other part is once we know what we're talking about, can we enhance it? If someone asks me, what is mindfulness? There are all states of fluidity in perception, fluidity in expression. There are states of tranquility, nowness, connection. You learn truths about the relationship between sensory experience, suffering, fulfillment, insight, positive behavior change. I call it focus training in the service of personal happiness broadly considered. Transcend sense versus nonsense. Okay, so who is Shenzhen Young? That's a hard question for me because he's been a lot of things in my life. I think first and foremost, a deep friend, mentor, and early on in my practice, he was my teacher. But Shenzhen is a very well-known American mindfulness teacher. He's uh, regarded as one of the first guard of mindfulness teachers who went to Asia, to East Asia, um, back in the 50s and 60s, learned the practices, and then brought them back to the United States. Shenzhen is sort of setting apart from the rest of the teachers and and being sort of extremely scientifically oriented towards his practice. Treating the subpersonalities yeah. as though they were family members? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the same theory around... Our lab really aims to combine both ancient wisdom and experiential wisdom with modern science techniques. Asking some of these deep questions about what are the patterns in the mind, what's happening in the body when these patterns get exhibited, and how can we create interventions. We also use a lot of tools like neuroimaging to try to measure the networks and try to measure when a person is actually going through a training platform like mindfulness training. Can we measure that? What does that look like? We're really interested in physiologic data and what's happening in the body. One of those things is what's happening with the heart rate. How is the heart rate sinking to the breath? How is the brain and the vagus nerve and the organs all working in resonance? Right now we're trying to do meditation plus. So we're looking at how we can teach young people who are really naive to meditation to see if they can learn it a bit faster. So we're training them the unified mindfulness techniques. You can use sound waves that are very high frequencies. You can focus that into the brain and you can modulate the brain function. So we're seeing if by modulating that with 
high frequency sound, we can actually get them to start to be present a little bit faster, get them to develop the skills of mindfulness a little bit faster. What I'm really hoping to do is create supportive structures to integrate happiness and well-being into people's lives and into their everyday experience. You know, it would be so nice to inspire joy. We could say we have not just science validated, but science informed focus training in the service of happiness broadly considered. That's what we want to produce at scale. What is most important to me, both in the lab and in my personal life, is trying to align how can we use these tools to help people. Can we really understand what a happy human being is, not just the state of happiness, but what does it look like to flourish or thrive? That's sort of the reason we all sign up to be scientists, honestly, is use science to better people's lives. Keep your fingers crossed because we can't predict the future. But so far, so good. <laughs>